Peculiar Productions. We interrupt this broadcast to inform you of an unthinkable terror. A giant mutated spider has escaped captivity. This fiend is more cruel and deadly than anything that's ever walked the earth. This monster is considered extremely dangerous, and authorities have announced mandatory evacuations of all surrounding areas. Stay tuned for updates, and be safe, America. I think the biggest misconception about spiders is that they're going to kill you and they're waiting in a corner somewhere trying to think of ways to go after you, but in reality, they're, they're not really that harmful. Are there better sutures that will give better results in patients than those that are currently being available? From a young age, I was really fascinated with insects and arachnids or spiders, and you know, I've always been into them. And as a child, I would often keep spiders that I captured outside. And you know, later in life, I realized I, I learned about the tarantula hobby, and you know, I started getting involved with that and started collecting them. And then it kind of got out of control, and now I have a lot. <laughs> um, I, I tell people that more than 15 years as a pediatric surgeon at Yale, it's been a lot longer than that. <laughs> the, the great majority of silk that's available in the operating room today is, uh, uh, is worm larva derived silk. It is a biologic product that is uh, prepared scientifically uh, by removing the outer antigen or outer protein layer, which is the one that is most likely to react against the body and leaving the inner protein, which is the, 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 the weaved portion of the silk itself. Spiders make their silk using um, silk glands that are found in their abdomen. These produce different kinds of proteins that then, when mixed together, come out of the spider as silk. Sutures that we use are very durable. I think that understand the, understand the purpose of, of suture material. They are basically to bridge the gap between the time that a wound is open, either um, surgically opened uh, in an operating room or as a result of injury where, where uh, edges of, of the body are brought back together again following injury. Occasionally we find that the sutures don't uh, have the flexibility that we would like to uh, have available to us, particularly as you move to the um, higher grade sutures, the ones that are thicker and bring edges together of of thicker and deeper portions of the body, so I think that there may be some room for improvement, uh, particularly in that area. Most sutures uh, that are used to approximate edges have to have enough tensile strength to be able to maintain those edges together for a period of time until the body heals those edges. Spider silk is five to six times stronger than steel, so it has a lot of you know uses. One of the colloquialisms that uh, is present in our discipline is called silk spitting. Uh, silk spitting merely refers to the fact that the body has rejected the silk that's embedded deep in the tissues. But I know that the human body uh, will not reject the silk and that it's beneficial for medicine in a few different ways. What, what I really wanted to emphasize the importance of the testing process to be certain that any impression that one has that it might be better has to be confirmed. By virtue of the fact that we've used them for so long, we probably haven't looked for alternatives that might be better. And I think that uh, if there are new innovative uh, uh, methods, we ought to explore those. You know, our field would never move forward unless people challenge the pre-existing order of things. Uh, so. Um, as I said, um, if it proved that spider silk was as effective as worm silk, then we would use it. Action. Stay tuned, America. 